Welcome to episode six of Zanji Does Tea. I'm your host, Zanji. I think I'm, my elbows are a little ashy. I just can't go out like that on camera. But um, if this is your first time here, this is a little series I have on my channel where I am meant to read people's stories. Let me put this down. I feel like my TV, my TV's up here. Um, this is a series on my channel where people submit their stories that they need advice on and I give advice and so does the subscribers, the audience watching. Um, because we are a small platform still, a small audience, what we are doing instead is heading over to Reddit and we give advice on stories that are there. And so, if you want to submit a story to Zangita's Tea, the email will be on the screen below. So, a few things, like if this is your first time here, we always do like a little breakdown, um, how would you say, catch up, like how's things been and stuff. Right now, it's October, and I wanted to make sure that I got a paranormal episode in one, two. I got my hair done over the weekend and I was like, girl, I need to get this on camera. It's really not its best potential right now, but I will tag her if you're in the Brockton, Boston, Massachusetts area. She does really good hair and she really um, prioritizes curly hair types. And y'all know, or if you don't know, I do hair videos on my channel as well, on my, all my social medias, I'll put them on the screen. Um, if you're in the area or if you ever want to just travel and just try a new hairstylist, she's really good. I really recommend her. She was so nice the whole time. And she's a fellow Virgo like your girl. So, um, with that being said, it's Halloween. Well, not Halloween, but it's October. And I wanted to get a little on the trend top, if you will. And it was I was like choosing between this and a shirt that has the skeleton hands on the titties, but y'all know youtube doing the most lately so i do not want to risk it um if this is also your first time here usually i like to have a, like a little nice um greenery or plants or flowers here this is my newest baby i really like her i still don't know a name for her yeah i'm just thinking about the fact that a lot of my vases don't have holes on the bottom but my plants have been growing but I definitely think that's not good. So I've been trying or wanting to dedicate time to that, but I'm so scared of breaking the vases at the bottom because like, it's a whole process. But also I usually always have a drink. Um, today's drink is this really yummy mango smoothie that I made with some like cream in it and stuff. And also, if you're, this is your first time here, I have really bad allergies and I will always sniffle my nose. I try my best to edit that shit out, but if I can't, I can't. Like, if I can't, I can't. I'm sorry. Um, and then another thing is sometimes I whisper when I film because I get I get the jitters, the nerves, you know, and there be people in the house and I don't want them to hear me. Like, I be nervous, I be shy. But um, yeah, today. And this week we didn't get submissions last week we did episode five so if you want to see what i have to offer to an actual subscriber or just an ongoing with or passing by here was it what is the word for it you know what i mean like a someone who just wanted to submit i don't know if they're really a subscriber or not i gave them good advice and if you want to submit submit below at the email but until then we'll continue with our reddit another thing too I don't know if this will be much of offering advice for today's episode more than just more so just like me reading creepy stuff that has happened to people comment down below if anything like if you have any paranormal experiences I have a few but I don't think I would ever make a story time about it not that I'm like shy about it or I'm like I would never tell like no not like that it's more like who really wants to listen to that honestly is my opinion but um I was banging. I wanted to do one paranormal episode. Comment down below if you've had any paranormal experiences before. Um, like I said, I've had a few and they were really weird. Like they honestly were. Um, and I want to say these were my encounters haven't been with like past loved ones. I don't think I think my loved ones are, you know, 
ancestors, if you will, spirit guides, come to me in animal form or numbers. That's really when I feel like that's them. The other shit, I don't know what that is. And it's not like I have a long, like maybe like two or three moments in my life, my entire life, um, where some shit was like sus. Like that's really it. But like I said, for this series or today's episode, I don't really know if I can give you advice because a lot of things people do spiritually spiritually or when something like this happens to them it, it's really religion based you know i'm not gonna be like girl you need to go to church like i don't know religion is really up to everyone and their own opinion and yeah we're just gonna really react to these stories and like i said what would you do in the situation what did this person do um but yeah i'm really excited to read these also comment down below if you like supernatural stuff paranormal stuff um conspiracy theories and things like that i'm definitely into that stuff but i can only do it like three to five days at a time okay hear me out like after a while i just it gets too much and then i start being paranoid and i'm like oh like you know this and that and you know comment down below if you watch those things or like murder stuff and like cases and things like that um i could never be a lawyer or a detective like those things are so like i just i'm like curious by nature that's really all i am when i'm around dead stuff and whatever like dead animals i just creep out my knees get weak i'm not good with death physically emotionally all of it um so yeah let's get started with episode six of zng does tea so let's get started guys i saved a few and i don't want to get emotional oh my god i'm always getting emotional in my series like but like death is like death can be well not death um paranormal things can be either really creepy or really touching because sometimes it is our loved ones visiting and trying to get in contact with us but um i'm gonna read this one because it seems kind of like you know by the title i haven't read these but um this person said my sister came in my dream before she passed <sighs> this is my first post ever my sister was an addict damn for 20 years she had gone out of jail for the millionth time exaggerating she wrote i loved her daily and never was rude to her because she was an addict as other families members were and they treated her badly anyway she got out of jail october 1st during the time she was out she stole 20 dollars from me i was angry because i used to be in a terrible financial situation to where every dollar counted on mine and my fiance's checks yeah and like i mean because this is an advice series but if you are going through something like that like there's a reason why family members are rude to these people they're just setting up a boundary i think it's fucked up when it's like your name calling a person and you're like you will never amount to anything keep doing what you're doing watch where you're gonna go like i think setting up healthy boundaries is more helpful for the both parties versus feeding into what they do or playing naive with them or you know there's a, there's ways to check someone and do it nicely you know what i mean i personally don't have any addicts i've been around or a situation like that but i've had peers who have had have been in situations like that and um i mean it's pretty textbook if you know what i mean like it, it's just how it is it's like psychologically speaking like um people are just some people need self-love and yeah unfortunate like I, I would hate to be in that situation honestly um if you have been in the situation and you feel comfortable commenting down below what you did or how you dealt with that but um let's keep going uh oh the tea she said my fiance became a successful youtuber okay who's this no sir my husband became a successful youtuber and we overcame our financial issues she passed away october 13 same year same month she got out of jail october 1st and passed away the 13th okay before i got the phone call i had laid down for a nap before my son's appointment during my nap she appeared in my dream in a white room i clearly remember saying what the heck is this no for real like sometimes you just be like what is going on um 
And I turn around, and she's there handing me $20 she stole in a cross necklace. I didn't have time to ask questions before she disappeared. Ten minutes after I woke up from the dream, I received a call that she had passed from an OD. That's sad as hell. Like, what do you guys think? Comment down below. Like, let's get real on this episode. Like, I think she feels guilt. And she can't even give her that money in real life. Like, that that ghost money she slid to her is not even valid. Like, I feel in my heart that she probably regrets. I wonder if the, that $20 is what she used to buy you know what I mean? That caused the overdose. Comment down below if you've had a loved one come into your dreams before that passed. It's pretty eerie that she came in your dream the day of. I've had my loved one visit me in a dream years after they pass, and you you wake up crying because you know that was them. Like it's very crazy, and I don't know anyone's beliefs, and th this video is very belief like no beliefs attached to it but um i personally believe that yes loved ones can come visit you in your dreams to tell you something but this seems like she has some regret and i wonder if she keeps coming in the dream trying to give her the 20 bucks because that would be torture um let's scroll down and see what people have said they said hold on to that moment yeah someone said the same thing but i feel loved ones visit us um in our dreams yeah a lot of people are really um happy that she shared this okay so let's see if i have a longer one okay this one is titled almost got killed in downtown los angeles saved by two angels question mark this was in 2014 or 15 my girlfriend and i were staying in a hotel um my girlfriend and i were walking to a parking structure um oh sorry i jumped ahead so the girlfriend and this person they were staying in a hotel that is known for being creepy i guess and they only learned about the history of the hotel after staying there i only stayed there because it was cheap and that place was freaky as hell but anyway i digress my girlfriend and i were walking to a parking structure where a car was because we planned on going to disneyland and we were walking there my girlfriend noticed a, noticed a shortcut to the car down an alley my instincts told me no, let's just walk around since it's a nice day outside, but she insisted, okay, let's go. As soon as we turned into the alley, I noticed right away that a man in a hoodie quickly turned and followed us down the alley as soon as we went, okay, was this story in the daytime, nighttime, what's the tea with that? I told my girlfriend under my breath, don't freak out, but we're being followed. <laughs> Comment down below if you think that was even the best thing to say, really, because I don't, I don't know. I told her to run and get help while I fight him off. As we started to pick our pace to create distance from him, I noticed that this alley is a dead end. There's no way out but to go back from where we came. This man was coming closer to us. He had his hand in his hoodie pocket by the belly. Uh, he had that ready. He had that strap. It's not even funny, but that's usually what that means, I think. I make a fist with my keys as I turn around to face him ready to fight we pass a dumpster I swear to god two men in perfect business suits with briefcases said good morning and walked past us very fast they popped out of nowhere they had black sunglasses were white and tall and six feet <clears throat> I couldn't say anything I couldn't give them a greeting of the day back I was in shock this man that was following us had turned around and sprinted out of the alley my girlfriend and I followed the two suits and suited men out of the alley back to the public streets. Hoodie guy was nowhere to be seen, but then we somehow also lost the two men in suits. I swear to God, they saved me and my girlfriend, now wife, life. I'm convinced they were angels protecting us from a potential tragedy. I still give my wife sh itch to this day about taking that alley. That's strange as hell. That one gave me goosebumps. Can the camera see it? Oh, how no. Ooh, it just got goosebumps. I didn't expect to get goosebumps. Oh, my God. I have nothing to say. Yeah, you might be right. Like, that's more creepy than, like, where the hell did y'all come from? What? Comment down below what y'all thought about that one. That was very... That was 
frustrating. I'm looking at what people commented and someone's like, is someone really gonna just attack you for no reason? Yeah, guys, people just, there are literally people out there that just do not, they don't care, they will do whatever. Like, yeah, someone's like, avoid Ali at all costs. True. I've, I've never gone through a lot of alleys my whole life, I don't think. I think I really do try to avoid them. Ugh, that's crazy. So this is pretty general, general title. No one said anything to them yet, but um, the title of this is Thoughts About This Experience I Had A Few Years Back? Question mark. This was a paranormal experience I had back in early 2018 that I kind of forgot about afterwards and kept in the vault of my brain. However, lately I've been taking up a bit more interest in paranormal stuff and realized that I've had an experience like that myself. So I thought I'd share it and see what you guys think about it. Okay, with the introduction, period. I was with a friend of mine. We went to visit a guy at this house, his house. For confidentiality, I'll refer to him as Tom. Tom was known for claiming to be able to see and talk with spirits. What's the tea? How do you know this person? Do you believe them? What do y'all think? Comment down below what y'all think is about to happen next. He was actually a really nice and friendly guy and didn't come across like he was crazy or anything. Right. Except that one thing. <laughs> um, he had a wife as well who was downstairs the entire time during this event while we were upstairs. He definitely took the spirit thing seriously though. As he had a whole setup and many expensive audio recording devices, he told us that he did a lot of testing with these devices and found that only one of them was capable of recording the sounds of a spirit. Have y'all ever heard of those things? I've heard of them. It's like a radio thing. I could put a picture on the screen. Do you guys believe in that stuff? I don't know. A part of me wants to believe it, but a part of me is like, aren't they like old as hell? Like they're just picking up whatever's around, like even air. I don't know, comment down below if you believe in it or if you have experience with that, comment down below and let me know. But it's hard for me to, I don't know, I'm iffy on that one. Um, Tom had a couple spirits in his home that were particularly there a lot. He wanted to try having us communicate with one of them using the audio recorder. He took us to a bedroom in the home that was about, this was about 8 p.m. or so and it was dark, saying that she, the spirit, was in there then adjusted some of the lights because according to him, it was the most comfortable for the spirit. Why did you read this? Did you think anything positive was going to come out of that? That's my sus. He gave us the recorder and told us to ask questions. There would, they could be any random questions. Tom told us that the spirit liked red cars and Elvis Presley a lot and got an idea of her interests. After the question, we then had to pause and give the spirit time to give her response. Tom left the room and went back to his own room and then we started asking questions ranging from do you like red cars do you have wings and so forth why did he leave y'all in there like you're leaving massive out like i'm getting a little annoyed like what's the tea like why did why did he leave the room that's so sus what after we finished we went back to the room that tom was in he took our audio recording slowed it down and raised the volume and indeed we were able to hear audio audible voice like responses to most of the questions we asked many were unintelligible but tom being experienced with this interpreted them told us what she was saying they were generally friendly responses we went in another time to ask more questions afterwards when we were done we found from the recording that the spirit was excited to see us again saying hello before we even started asking a question if this was a real spirit it was likely a friendly one do y'all see me squinting my eyes i'm like something ain't adding up something ain't adding up there was also a second spirit tom told us about but he was less outgoing and was hanging out in the bathroom i was a bit freaked out yet fascinated at the same time after that night Following that, I just kind of forgot about it after a while, and I still to this day have no idea how to explain whether that was real or, or not. If this was a hoax, I have no idea how to explain it. It would have been extremely well set up. Maybe his wife was downstairs listening through a mic and made quiet responses that the recorder was picking up upstairs. Yeah, um, no comment. 
comment down below if you have a comment because no comment for me it's giving it's giving sus it's giving like I don't know if I would believe Tom. Tom, I'm not really buying it, babes. Like, <laughs> so this is the next one. Should I contact a paranormal investigator or what? I was probably in elementary school when I was in my bedroom with the radio and lights on. Out of nowhere, everything with power in my room shut off and a dem demonic voice came clearly on the radio saying, you're going to hell. What would you do if that happened? Because at first I was like, girl, the lights be shutting off in people's house sometimes. Stop it. Don't. But the voice, like, the radio, I would literally be shook. I'd be like, that radio's going in the trash. That radio's going in the trash. Um, I told my parents, and they didn't believe me, of course, and nor did any of the other lights or power go out in the house. Well, there be fuses like situations and it's just a room sometimes it's just a room it's yeah i am now an adult living alone and feel like i may be experiencing paranormal activity in my apartment i'm so scared for what it's worth my friends and i mess around with the you know what i'm about to say she messed around with the ouija board a few years back And quote, but we were just playing around. Let me tell y'all something. If you're gonna get any advice today, is this do not buy one, do not play with one, do not even be curious enough to open one. Don't do it. Like, all I've ever heard are horror stories from Ouija boards. People don't know how to properly open them, how to properly summon shit, how to properly close spirits, spirit hallways, whatever doors. People don't know what they're doing. Stop. Like, really, there's so much, there's so many things to do in this world. Why, why that? No, like, seriously, like, I'm not even trying to be, like, a strict mom right now. Like, guys, really, like, it's not worth it. Like, it's so dumb. It is so dumb. Don't even, like, just don't. Everything else, you can do whatever you want. Go to a haunted house. Go play with the little ghost radio if you want. Don't do that. Like, that's just weird. Like, I don't even know how to tell you you don't do that, but you know what I mean? Like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. All you hear, if something is always negative, just don't even try it out. Like, it's like, for me, it's like the dark web. You're not supposed to go on that shit. Once you go in it, like, that's on your guilty record, your IP address record. Like, it's not worth it. You know shit now. People got your information. Like, just avoid it. If it's avoidable, you're bored do something else girl do something else period it's my desk move i had to move it over but um yeah people are roasting like i said yeah people are going in about the ouija board it's not worth it don't even buy one like i really honestly feel like why do we even sell those honestly there's probably spiritual reasons it's probably meant meant and made for people who practice certain things maybe like these sellers should avoid selling it to randoms like you know what i mean like i don't know i don't know a ouija board is not a toy or a fun thing to just take up there are rules yep many have learned the hard way for hard way for breaking the rules yep demonic activity has one goal to f with the living yes they do that is their goal well someone was being helpful they said um Go to your metaphysical local metaphysical store and tell them the paranormal activity you're going through, and they could offer cleansing materials and advice and so on. That's really good to know, cause honestly, we're just regular people trying to live our regular lives, and then boom, one day you went to a house that's haunted and you had no clue about it. Like, I kind of think I should have researched this for myself as well. So, from me to you and this person to us that is a good thing to do to visit a metaphysical store i've never heard of those um but apparently they can help you someone said i'll let you know right now there is never any fun when you play with these boards every time you play you invite the risk of it being worse every time that should tell you 
that should tell you guys like that's crazy one more here strange experience at a concert i've never had a paranormal activity at a concert comment down below i've never concerts are pretty regular for me um what i've always been creeped out about is movie theaters do y'all agree with me you know you know what i mean like sometimes it's a, it's a little vibe in there like i'd be like why is it so chilly you know what i mean in hospitals I'm like, where do the dead people really go here? Like, where are they? I'm scared. Like, I'm being a little worried. Like, are, is it below me? Is it in the unrestricted level above me? Like, comment down below what what's a place for you that you feel like is very strange, paranormal. So they said, I found out my friend passed away around August 1st. At the time, we'd been out of touch for a few years as we were both married. I stayed in our hometown and he moved out to Washington, D.C. However, in our high school and college days, we'd been very close and spent a ton of time together, played sports and went to concerts together. He went out to college and I visited him a few times. One of those visits, I brought my new girlfriend and she's not my wife. Naturally, we hadn't stayed in touch as we got older, but always chatted whenever our paths crossed. So I was upset to learn that he'd been killed in a car crash overseas. Damn, that sucks, bro. A day after I'd heard of his passing, my favorite band, the Foo Fighters, announced a secret show at a tiny club in Chicago. The following day, my wife and I managed to get two tickets and we felt lucky as the capacity of the club was around 1,000 people. The hard part was that not long after we'd scored these uh, these tickets, it was announced that my friend's funeral was going to be the same day. Obviously, I couldn't be in two places at once. I struggled to make the right decision. I asked my mom for her opinion. She felt that maybe getting the tickets was kind of a sign to go to the concert as we'd gone to so many in the past and had so many great memories. Comment on what you would have done in the situation. Quite honestly, moms, I'm sorry for the advice you always say your son giving me. I would have gone to the funeral for just the fact that if I, I mean, I'm a firm believer that people go to their funerals like after they pass their visit and they want to see what's up. That's just my take. I just feel like people be visiting. They want to see who who showed out to the function. No, I'm just kidding. No, but I feel like they sometimes do go. So I'd feel like my friend would be like, damn, like you couldn't even be there for me in that last moment too. Like really, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know, but it's clear what this person is about to do next. But comment down below what you would have done. What you would have done. And if you've ever been in a situation where it's a very big, weighing the scale submit a story to the email below let's keep going okay so my wife and i opted for the concert it was a five hour drive to chicago and we spent the majority of our time reminiscing but also feeling guilty that's what i'm saying that guilt that night as the food fighters took the stage um dave Grohl don't know who that is slowly talked while plucking his guitar as he started i wonder what they'd open with to our amazement they played our favorite song Ar aurora oh my god that word is so hard to say aurora aurora um it is a beautiful song about the cosmos and unknown i had also been a handful of years it had also been a handful of years since the band played it and after doing some research that may have been the only time they opened with it my wife burst into tears i was in shock i couldn't believe it all my guilt washed away it was like a head nod from above that it was okay truly unexplainable but maybe not paranormal our daughter was then born a few years later and her middle name is aurora <laughs> aurora yeah aurora comments are yeah that was him ah uh, that's beautiful yeah i mean yeah, I'm definitely, yeah, I have goosebumps right now. Um, Yeah, I'm a firm believer. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, loved ones come in, showing up in different ways, but this is very beautiful. Do I wish you went to that funeral? Yeah, but um, I know I said that I feel like people visit their funeral like after they pass. 
There might be people I don't. They might they may might have never asked for anyone that's at the funeral anyway and might go do something else. So in this situation, maybe he was there with him. Like, let's bump one more time, bro. Like, let's 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 hit this beat. Like, that's very beautiful. Um Yeah, comment down below what you think about that one. How many have I read so far? I feel like I've read a lot because I'm not really giving advice. And then also I tend to try to make this video out like an hour long, I mean the series hour long episodes, but I feel like I've read like six. Am I, am I dragging it? Has it been four? I don't know, but it's only, it hasn't even been in like an hour of footage yet. Okay, let's read this one cause it's given, it's given some tea. This is called talking to something upon waking up question mark. This happened literally 15 minutes ago. Both me and my ex are heavily into occult, um, occult things, if that means anything. There are numerous paranormal things over the years, but I've never encountered something like this until now. I had two or three effed up dreams and I thought I died in one of them. No, cause let's get into it. Dreams, dreams are really, dreams are really something like, they really show you shit like they give you a little taste of what's to come they also address your fears and stuff in your head like dreams are powerful and let me give you a pro tip actually if you have to take melatonin to sleep at night please use with, use with caution i have to take it a lot because i have delayed sleep syndrome or something like that it's like what well, i hope i'm saying that right it's like when your body gets very active when it's time for bed no matter what. I've tried working out in the morning, waking up at 6 a.m. every day to combat that. Guys, I cannot sleep till one. Like, it's a problem. So by the time it's like 10 or 11, I'll take my little melatonin gummy and I'll be like ready for bed after like 20 minutes, right? When you use melatonin too much, your dreams will be damn near paranormal, okay? There will be sus, there will be random stuff. You will have reoccurring bad dreams like it's just really bad stuff like you can look this up on google when you take too much melatonin after a while your dreams start to get sus as hell um that's just a pro tip comment down below if you know what i'm talking about or if you have sleep delay sleep syndrome as well because it is not easy out here listen don't even comment girl get into bed by 9 p.m you'll be fine I be in bed from like 10 to one awake. Like I cannot fall asleep. I'll put the phone down. Same thing. But th this is not what this video is about, okay? It's about paranormal today. However, be careful with melatonin and yeah. Also comment down below, have you ever passed away in your dream? I don't know if I've necessarily passed away in my dream, but I've been in this recurring dream where I'm driving my car and my brakes stop working and I come into a car, like I crash, and then I wake up. I don't know if it's because by that point I died or what. Um, I also have this very random fear that like, something is happening, I already died and now I'm just transitioned into the next life and it's just all the same anyway. Like, comment down below if you know what I mean, if you know where I'm coming from. Y'all yeah, about to unsubscribe. Y'all be like, this girl's crazy. I'm done. I'm done watching her videos. No, but you know what I mean? Like, we're being real today. We're being honest in today's episode. I know I'm not the only one. You're never just driving. You're like, am I alive right now? <laughs> that's very, it's giving me an existential crisis, but that's not what I'm trying to refer to. But let's continue reading this. Oh my God. So yeah, she said in one of them, she died in the dream, but it felt very real. So I tell my ex, and I'm still drowsy as usual when waking up at this point, but definitely awake. Hey, so she's she's writing now what they're saying. Hey, I had a strange dream. I think I died. And then her ex goes, it says in, in his usual, in her usual voice, but toned down. Really? And then the person responds, yes, I think like, I don't know, like I legitimately died while I was sleeping. The ex, I think you told me that while you were sleeping and then he goes i did what did i say x i can't remember correctly and then he said come on like can you try to it felt real 
the ex goes, oh, I remember it was like 430 and you told me that you died and just laid there without moving or breathing for like 23 seconds. Was she counting? Like, and they said, that's it. And the ex goes, yeah, let's go back to sleep. The next line, this is what I came for to write it today. The next line, at this moment before going back to sleep, I realized I was sleeping alone. <laughs> and then this person put a little more explanation. Every single time we sleep together, I sleep with my back turned on the right side. I can't visualize that, but I'm assuming they always have their back to their partner. I'm 100% sure I heard her or whatever that was, was straight behind me. I've never in my life had visual or audio hallucinations. And despite doing various rituals and workings, okay, slow down. I know most will chalk it up as a dream, but believe me, I'm absolutely certain I was awake. My brain for some reason didn't register that I wasn't living with my ex anymore. Once I got a response from whatever it was, Someone said they're confused. Not honestly, because what? So your back, so basically it seems like this person's back was turned in general and they were talking to something, but they didn't necessarily feel it. And then they remembered, oh, I don't even have a girlfriend. Like, <clears throat> someone said, it seems like you were having a hallucination and you realized. Someone said, I was wondering why you were in bed with your ex. Um, good for you for maintaining such a good friendship, da, da, da. But then I realized, what do y'all think about that? That's, that's gross. That's really, it's bringing me back to my own story. I'll say it like really quick. I took a nap and I I was home alone and there was, ugh, I, I like, do I do a whole video for this? Like I never told my family cause I didn't want them to be creeped out and be like, do we have to move? Or, oh, this girl has finally gone crazy. Like I just did it. I told my friends only. <sighs> Oh my God, I was like, take, I'll tell y'all really quick. And if you want a detailed story time, I can do it. But I took a nap and I took a nap on my little brother's bed, which I was way too fucking big to sleep on the bed anyway. So there was literally no room. You could imagine a little, you know, a little kid's bed. Um, His room was at the front of the house, like next to the door. Like it wasn't in like a creepy part of the house. It was like right there next to the windows, everything. And oh my God, I'm getting too detailed. If you want a detailed story time, let me know in the comments. But basically, I was home alone. I took a nap. I came from school. Y'all y'all know when y'all come home from school, you just knocked out. I took my nap and 20 to 30 minutes in, wake up, sleep paralysis. And I can't turn around. There's some thing behind me, sleeping with me, breathing on my neck. I'm not even kidding. Breathing on my neck. And I just feel two legs and a fucking tail. Like swinging in between my legs and I was like and I couldn't turn around I couldn't turn around you guys know how sleep paralysis is you gotta like talk to yourself in your head close your eyes wake up close your eyes wake up. tell yourself wake up wake up snap out of it I woke up though no one was in the house with me it was no like it was nothing it was there was no one there I'm not even let me know in the comments below if you want that story because ugh I'm just like, I feel warm to know that this person had an imposter next to them like I did. Oh my God, I'm just thinking back to that time. Like, that shit was crazy. That shit was so weird. Like, also comment down below if you had a situation like that. Like, I need to know I'm not alone because that was so crazy and it hasn't happened ever since. Um, and I think that's why I like to sleep with my back touching my partners. Cause I'm like, we're not, I'm not having no weirdo weird ass ghost come try to cuddle with me again <sighs> it was crazy I could feel the br like breathing in my ear like and I was home alone I was home at like three no one came home till like six like the front door is really loud someone came in you kind of have to slam it like and I'm I'm a heavy sleeper but I would have heard that because that door is very loud like it was crazy oh my god Let's change things up and let's try to read something um, happy. It seems like this is a little sentimental one. It's titled, Trees I Planted 18 Years Ago Felt Happy to See Me Last Time I Went and Visited Them. 
So when I was about five years old, I planted about 500 to 600 pine trees, girl. On some land, our family, is that legal? Like you can plant that many trees? Something about that don't feel legal, sis. Um, well, thank you for sharing. I mean, do you? Like, that's really sweet. Like, I'm not trying to be a hater or anything. I'm just like, is that, like, is that legal? They planted it on some land and our family owns land with grandpa. Okay. I think that's where it's fine if you own the land. Okay. Grandpa died a couple years later and no one ever went back until recently when I decided I wanted to go camp with some friends. Not you deciding like you want to go camping on your land. Like she got money, period. As soon as I got there, I was amazed at how tall they were. They were at least 30 to 40 feet and I just couldn't shake the feeling that the whole little forest was happy to see me. The whole time I was there, I felt positive. I just felt like I was getting happy vibes from the tree. Um, I was thinking maybe either nature spirits or residual energy mixed with my own emotions. What do you guys think? So people commented, some people on Reddit are just so childish. She's talking about, it made you horny. What the hell are you talking about? You would just waste our time. Do you ever just read something you're like, I'm never getting that time back. Yeah, people are being so rude. Like someone was like, this is how trees work okay anyway yeah somebody said um your grandpa turned into a tree maybe <laughs> someone just wrote their whole story here i don't i'm not about to read that but um there's a study that shows plants react to our emotions and responses yeah i think yeah someone said i'm i'm my boot i'm practicing buddhism and i do believe you that they feel like the trees do show emotion i feel like obviously we weren't there girl you know, to know what you were going through, to know what was going on. But I definitely think that it was nature spirits. I think, you know, I don't know how to word it because I've never been in that situation, but I understand what you mean. Like the trees are probably swaying a certain way, probably making certain sounds. I would feel like I would feel a vibe. You, you When you're in a place where the vibe is very strong, you just feel it. I believe her. What do y'all think? Comment down below see i think i'm gonna end off there on a positive note since it is paranormal and i know that my lights are starting to dim so that means that the video's gotta be wrapped up but thank you so much for watching today's episode of angie does tea if you do want to submit like i said there's an email down on the screen below and as always thanks for tuning in if you want to see my other content my hair stuff i can link that all on the screen here follow me on the other social medias that i have don't forget to leave here without subscribing, girl. Like, you wasted your whole time watching this video. Like, did you like it? Did you not? You know what I mean? Like, give me a little like. Give me a little follow. And, yeah, guys. I will see you in the next one. Happy Halloween. Happy October whenever you're watching this. And make sure you water your plants today. It is my last word of advice. And, yeah. I'll see you in the next one.